Greetings everyone, Fro here. Welcome to the Demo Hub. In today's demo, we're going to take a look at setting up a session within Snowpack for Python to interact with the Snowflake environment. Now, if you're not familiar with Snowpack for Python, we've made amazing demos on that on the channel. Go ahead, check around the channel for those demos. Today's demo will focus on creating a session for Snowpack for Python. We'll go through this from beginning to end on getting that set up. Now, of course, you can always read the documentation, but the goal of these demos is to be an extension to those documentation. That said, let's jump right in into the demo. Assuming you have Visual Studio Code set up, we'll start with a blank script. Call that snowpack.py. Once we have that, go ahead and import a couple of packages and modules. The most important one here is the snowpack session, and this is what we're going to be using for the rest of the demo links to all of this will be in the description below as well next bring in some configuration so this is a config parser we're going to use to read our credentials from a password file here we're going in with config config parser this is pretty standard and this will look at the file on a machine called config.ini but for this to work we have to import the config parser and then import os this should resolve without issues. Let's open this up. Now this code is looking at a file called config.ini and you're going to want to set up this file. So within your directory, create a brand new file, name that file config.ini. I already have one created here. I'm not going to open that, but I'm going to open one which has dummy data. In here, put in the name of your configuration and you're going to put in the variables of those configurations. Here is a snowflake account and passing the value of your account name, a snowflake user, and this should be the user you're going to be authenticated with and the password database schema and warehouse. You can have different groups of this configuration. So this could be dev. You could have another configuration group here called snowflake prod, put in the values for that snowflake prod. It's important to do this in a config file so you can separate your credentials from your code. Now let's go ahead and close this config file. Of course, I'm going to read from this one, which has my actual credentials. Here, we're going to init path OS. We're going to read from that file. Now, what are we going to read from that file? We're going to read the credentials from the file. And the way we we'll do that here in Python would be reading the Snowflake credentials. This is going to call config, the name of the config group we want. So Snowflake, if we go back in here, we're looking at Snowflake. And from within Snowflake, we're basically picking a variable called Snowflake account. And that variable would be passed in here. So if you go back, we have account, we have user, password, DB, schema, warehouse. You can include row or whatever configurations you want uh, to be referenced in here. Now, never open this file. Do not share this file. Do not even put this file into your source control. Follow your best practices for managing credentials for your organization. Now, once we have all of that, this code will run and the credentials will be passed into those variables. The next thing we need is create our connection. Simply specify connection parameters. We're going to put this here. So account will be the Snowflake account. User will be the user from above. Password will be coming from above as well. Database, schema, and warehouse. So pretty standard. Now, all of this gets us ready to creating our session. Here, we're going to instantiate a session. We're going to use the session.builder configs, and we're going to pass in the parameters. The parameters we want is going to come from this parameter list, create a session into the session uh, variable. Now, again, these connections are all using variables, which has been passed from our connection.ini file. Now, once we have our session, we can begin doing work with Snowpack for Python. So we can do something like output would be going through the session. And in this case, if you want to access the session with SQL, so we're going to do session.sql and put in your SQL code. I'm doing a count star from the customer table in the sample data set. And this will be good enough for Snowpack to execute on Snowflake. Print 
output, they should give us result. And this result will be running, leveraging Snowpack for Python. So let's recap what we've done here with the code. So here we're getting in config parser and OS, pretty standard. All this allows us to do is to read a config file coming from a file sitting on a machine. Now, once we have that, we're going to import a couple of packages and modules. So pretty standard. Here we're reading our configuration files from the config.ini file. Now, once you have that, you're going to go ahead and create a connection parameter list. And once that list is created, we're going to do a session builder that leverages our parameter list. Now, this should give us a session that can then interact with Snowpack for Python. So whatever SQL we write in here, this SQL would execute on Snowflake. Let's go ahead and execute this. Just like that, we get a row count of 1.5 million, which is exactly what we have in that table. So if I go over back into my Snowflake environment and we click on activities, history, we should see that query executing on a Snowflake environment, leveraging a Snowpack. Now, this is all fine and good, but the power of Snowpack for Python goes beyond just writing SQL. So what we're going to see here is instead of writing session.sql and putting in a SQL string, let's go ahead and use data frame style processing. To delete all of that, we still have the session. We're going to put in a table name into a variable and create a new data frame for this. That references that table. So this table exists on my Snowflake environment. This is one of the task history tables. I use that to create a Snowflake data frame. Now, this data frame is not like your Pandas data frame. This is native to Snowflake pointing to a table in the Snowflake environment. Now, if you're familiar with Pandas and if you have a data frame, well, what can we do with that data frame? We can do some data frame style manipulation here. I can do a filter for states, look for jobs that have been skipped, do some group by the time the jobs were run and persist that result back into a Snowflake table for the aggregated task history. Now, this is an example of what you can do. I'm sure you can do something more exciting based on your use case, leveraging data frame style processing on your data set or natively in Snowflake. Go ahead and execute this. This code written in data frame style processing will be translated by the Snowflake engine into highly optimized SQL that would run leveraging the Snowflake's elastic compute environment. Go back over and we look at activities and query history. See the query coming in here to create or replace that table. And if we want, we can zero in into this query. And now this is complex optimized query generated for us by Snowpark's engine running on Snowflake, leveraging Snowflake's elastic compute and elastic warehouses. So for you as a data professional, you're writing the way you write data frame style processing, but the net result is you're taking advantage of the compute in Snowflake, the elasticity of this compute and your work is done in Snowflake. The data hasn't left your environment. The data stays in Snowflake and your computation happens in Snowflake. So essentially, you're bringing your computation to the data as opposed to bringing data to that computation. And this is what this all allows us to do. So we've touched the tip of the iceberg. Just to recap what we've seen, setting up your session with Snowpack for Python. What you need is a way to get your configuration. One way we've shown here is leveraging the config.ini. Now, once you have your configuration, you're going to create your configuration list of your credentials. Now, that list will allow you to create a session. Once you have that session, you can either interact with Snowpack for Python, leveraging SQL, or you can use data frame style processing. If you are going to leverage SQL, you'll be writing session to SQL and putting in your SQL code. Any arbitrary SQL code can be executed leveraging this approach. But again, the beauty of Snowpack for Python is you can extend SQL. Well, SQL for short, you want to leverage Pandas style processing by leveraging the data frames that Snowpack for Python provides and all of that code is executed on Snowflake. But this has been through. Hopefully this demo was helpful to you getting your session set up with Snowpack for Python. In future demos, we're going to go in, unpack a lot of exciting capabilities around Snowpack for Python. As always, if you like the video, please like it. Share this with somebody that might get value out of it. Really do appreciate that. 
It signals to YouTube we're doing something amazing. As always, again, thanks for watching. This has been through. I'll see you in the next demo. Oh, <laughs> oh,